Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsanza Vool, and in this video we're going to be using add-ons to detail a flight pad as efficiently as we can. So in the last video on this project we did this blocking out and we're basing this on an old piece of scenery. So we're going to be having a look at this top flight pad and adding some detailing to it. Now for this I'm going to try and do this as efficiently as possible, or at least as efficiently as I can think of doing it. There might be more efficient ways, in which case do feel free to comment in the comment section. But we're going to be using Mesh Machine, Hard Ops, Box Cutter and Just Panels to try and make this as quick as we can. I've already got videos on most of these add-ons, so where they come up they'll either be in the description or they'll be in a link in the top right hand corner. And there's also affiliate links in the description if you're interested in getting one of these, and then that will help support the channel. So if you've seen the boxing out video you know that we haven't actually applied most of our modifiers here, we're trying to keep it as non destructive as possible. If I go into face mode we can see that there's a boolean cut there. So let's try to keep this non-destructive. So what I'm going to do is select that face and that face, press 4 which will use the smart face tool in machine tools and then I'm going to go into object mode and we've got that there. And that gets copied with all the booleans so it's still got this corner cut out of it. I'm going to press Q and then I'm going to smart apply which I've got set to my quick favorites and then we can G and Z that up slightly and then let's scale it in so it's going to be a bit more interesting to look at when we do get all of these panel lines done somewhere around there bring that up slightly more and what i'm going to do is because we've got this edge in the middle here and there's no need for that at this point so q clean mesh and again that's set to my quick favorites and now this is nice and clean then we need to extrude this so i'm going to go into face mode select it Come to side view and then let's E to extrude that down somewhere about there. Let's actually G and Z that down a little bit more so that we can cut our panels into the top. And the shading's a bit funny and that's going to be because Blender wanted me to extrude that up instead of down. If I come to face orientations we can see that's off. So just go into vertex mode A, shift and N to flip the normals or recalculate them even and then that's going to be fine. Okay so we've got that there, that's working pretty well at this point. But we do want to have our landing pad sort of have this circular pattern in the middle like the original. So I'm just going to select this with that central origin, shift and S. Yeah, that's using machine tools and this cursor and origin pie. And then let's bring the cursor to the center so that when I shift and A, mesh and bring in a cylinder, that's right in the center. And let's do something like 128. Let's scale that up and see how that looks. Yeah, that's pretty round looking still. But I need to leave a bit of space on the outside if I just bring up the picture to leave space for these kind of cool raised sections which I'm guessing deflect some of the force from the engine. So let's go, yeah, there. Now we're going to want to cut this out of this cube. So let's shift select the cube, control and minus for a boolean. Now I am going to want this shape later and I don't really want it being a cutter at that point. So what I'm going to do is press Q, come to settings and go to shade solid. And if you press control, what that does is that duplicates the cylinder, takes it out of the cutter collection, puts it back into your collection, and that means you've got access to it, and this won't affect, if I just G, the things that have already been done. So I'm going to press H to hide that, and then let's hide that one as well, and let's Q and Smart Apply to make sure that that's been done. And then let's get working on these panels. So we've done a video looking at how we're going to work on these panels. There's a link in the top right hand corner and in the description using box cuts to do this. I'm not going to talk about that in detail here because it's already been done. So go back and watch that video if you want to. But I'm going to start by slicing here. And then we want some interesting panels. Oh actually in fact because this is a circle that's been cut out of the middle or any object that's been cut out of the middle. If I go into edge mode you can see we've got these edges which is basically attaching it to the outside. Now if we apply these so hard ops and smart apply we can actually get rid of those now because well we don't need them because we've got this sort of semicircular shape that's now not a hole in the middle we do need to do that for the bottom as well now both of mine were on one side there's a chance if you do that that some of yours might come out onto the other side that's fine you're just going to need to deal with those as you go right what are we going to do so let's just carry on i'm going to cut this one in half again let's do that one Let's do something different. Let's do it so it's not in half. It's something like that. And then for this one, we'll do something a bit different. We'll use an Engon cut to have a little bit more of an interesting angle. So let's go something like there and then there and out. And slice through. And does this one need anything extra? Yeah, let's do the opposite sort of way here. So we'll go there, there. Nice. Right, so let's select all of those. So W out of box cutter, just so we don't misclick something. Let's smart apply that. 
and then we are going to have to fix this because at the moment those are combined together into one shape. We don't want that. So I'm going to go into vertex mode, A, P, and then move that by loose parts. So now they are separated. I'm also going to select all of these and then Q and clean mesh because it means that there's less likely to be any problems. In the original video showing this, I did this as I went along applying each thing, but apparently you can just do this by doing smart apply and it'll probably solve most of those issues. Then we're going to shift and select here, N, just panels and make 3D panel. And we've got all of our cool 3D paneling going on here. So there we go, looking pretty nice. Let's H and hide those objects. Yeah, pretty happy with that. I think that's going to be interesting. But we do want to make it a little bit more interesting with this central bit, which is why I've got this cylinder here. Let's make that visible. And let's G and Z that up. Otherwise, we're going to get a horrible interaction over here. So let's bring that to the point where, again, it's just above that surface. That works. And then all I'm going to do is S, Shift and Z, and let's shrink that in a bit. If we can't see this very well, we can always come over here and turn on wireframe. Now, thinking about it, on this, we don't need this edge anymore. And actually, I'm surprised that hasn't caused issues already. If you're doing this yourself and you're finding that there's some issues, it might be because this exists. So I'm going to control an X to get rid of that. And that should, in theory, solve some issues if you're having any. So we need to control an A and apply the scale. And then I can select this and then use make 3D panels as well. And then we've got that one in the middle. Let's turn off the wireframe and let's carry on with this. So let's hide that. Now I was gonna model the numbers onto the top of this so they're actually in there, but I'm sort of a bit reticent to do that just because I'm a little worried that people might want this for something that requires there not to be a number on it. So having that actually modeled out is gonna be a bit of a pain. So I'm actually gonna leave that. But that could be something you could do. There's a link to quite an old tutorial on how to add text to an object. So you're more than welcome to have a look at that and you could do that yourselves. But let's add in the bits that I mentioned, the sort of protection flaps that come up from out of the floor. I think we're going to need a cube for this. So let's shift an A and cube. And then we're going to S to scale that up. Let's turn wireframe back on so I can see where we're looking. How thick do I want that to be? That's probably about right. And then let's S and X to scale that a bit on the X. Maybe somewhere around there. Actually a little bit bigger. Let's see how that looks. We'll come into side view, G and Z that up because we're going to be using this to cut out a section from the top. So we'll go there. You'll see what I'm doing in a second. And then we're going to Q, mesh tools and then radial array. And then that should allow us to bring that out. We only want four. In fact, we only want three, but we'll do with four and then we'll delete one of them. Let's go somewhere around there. And then for a trick we're going to do later, so let's get rid of that panel. I'm going to Q and Smart Apply, and then I'm going to go into Vertex Mode, and then A, P, and Separate by Loose Parts. So we've now got separate objects, and we can delete this one out that we don't want. So if you want to keep all four sides, you can, but I'm going to get rid of that one so it sticks to what the original looked like. And then selecting each of those, I'm going to Shift and S, and I'm going to move the origin to the geometry so each one has its geometry in the center that's going to be important for a little trick we're going to use later so let's shift select those shift select our object control and minus and we've got that cut out so this would be effectively the hole where this flap resides before it's brought up now this is going to look a bit weird over here because it seems like there shouldn't be able to be this uh, we might have to add some sort of object. I mean, on the original version of this, this was actually so microscopically thin that it could never work because it was a layer of cardboard. But it might be good to add something in here so that we've got a space where this could have come from. So we might end up making that thicker. I'll decide about that later. Now, with this, what we want to do is have a shape that we can add in here. So I'm actually going to use the same trick again of going to Q, Settings, and I'm going to Shade Solid with Control clicked. So we've now got an extra object that we can play around with. Let's come to top down view. Let's go into face mode, A, Alt and S to scale that in equally on all sides. And then I can put that in however many millimeters I want, probably somewhere like two to give a good gap that it's raised out of. And then I'm going to go into vertex mode, side view. Let's go into x-ray mode. Let's G and Z those down a bit because they need to go into the floor for our booleans to work nicely. Select those, G and Z. Let's get that relatively equal to the height of the floor, somewhere like there. And then for our next bit, 
we're going to need our cursor to be moved again. So let's go into edge mode, select that edge, shift and S, move the cursor to the edge, go into face mode and select just this top face. And then let's go into object mode and let's start making this shape a little bit more interesting. So let's hold W for box cutter. We've still got our Engon cutter on. Actually, let's stick with that. So let's do something on the side like there. Yeah, in fact, actually, let's Q, ever scroll, and then G and Y that a little bit higher, I think. And then let's do a similar thing at the top, maybe just towards the middle, something like there. Yeah, that should look fun. And then let's Alt and X and mirror that. Okay, right, that should work. Now we're gonna to need to apply those. So let's Q Smart Apply and then Q and we're gonna clean the mesh to get rid of that mesh that was in the middle. Otherwise that can cause some issues. So face mode, let's select our face. We've got our cursor in the correct place, which is on that edge. And we're gonna come and use the spin tool. Now at the moment we can see that there, but it's doing it on the Z. We want it to work on the X and we can just drag that to make our raised section. Now I want this to be a bit smoother than 12, so let's up that to 36, and that's gonna give us a nice smooth shape to work with. Now I will say that this is destructive, but there's not really that much we can do about that in this instance. And then we are gonna to have to deal with one other problem, which is if we try to do anything with this at the moment, this is going to screw everything up because the way that this spin tool works is as you can see, it's created, well, 36 versions of this face, each one extruding out a little bit more with a turn. But because this is doing this exactly on this corner, if I go into vertex mode, there is actually 36 versions of this vertex on that corner, and we don't want that. So all we need to do is A, M, and merge by distance. We could have also just cleaned it in any of the other ways that we clean, and that would have sorted that. Cool, so now we've got our raised bit, but yeah, this is a bit dull. I think we could have some detailing here. So let's get that sorted straight away. So face mode, I'm gonna select that face. I'm gonna shift and seven on my number pad so that I'm facing that face perfectly. This is gonna be important so we get even thickness on this face that's been raised up. Again, you'll see what I mean as I go through this. D, let's go to box and then we're going to cut through this somewhere around there. I'm not too worried about it being perfect. In fact, let's go into isolation mode so you can see what's going on here. And yeah, that looks about right. But we want to have the front face. And you'll notice this also does weird things with the way you move around when you go into this mode. So I'm just gonna press one and then start panning around and it's gonna be fine again. But we have cut out the entire middle section, which obviously is not great. It looks like that. So Q, ever scroll, grab that, go into face mode front face and we want to G and then Z, Z, and then we can bring back that portion of the face for however thick we want it to be. In fact, that looks a little bit thin. Let's make it a little bit more chunky. There we go. Now this is probably, I know it looks simple, but maybe the most important lesson for this, doing these sort of curved sections and then having something flat attached to it. If this was a few years ago, I would have probably been trying to do this by creating the flat object first, then these bits around the edge and trying to join them together and it would create an awful mess. Whereas this is a much simpler way of doing it. Also, you can do some other things with this as well. So let's see how this looks. So. Yeah, that detailing looks quite nice. We probably want to be able to detail some pistons here that are maybe making this function. So let's sort some pistons. So shift A, mesh, and let's bring in a cylinder. W to get our box cutter. How wide is this cylinder? Two millimeters? That should probably be all right. But the one thing I can say for certain is we don't need that many vertices. So let's down that to 64. Let's bring that over here. G and Y, so we're somewhere around there. Might put an angle on this as well. We'll deal with that later. But either way, let's go into face mode. I'm just going to isolate this for a second. Select that face. E, then right click to cancel. S to scale that out a bit. E to bring that down. I to inset it a little bit as if it's got some sort of detailing around the outside. And then E to bring it down. So we've got this piston type thing with this nice bit of trim. And we've got that there. If we want to make this one longer, we can do. So that's G and Z that up. Something like that. And then we need to decide if we want this here. Let's come out of wireframe. It's starting to annoy me slightly. 
Do we want that directly like that, or do we want to R and X and have it at a bit of an angle? Mm, it's not going to get in way with that. I think that looks quite cool. Yeah, let's go with that. We're just going to need to make that a little bit longer on the bottom face. So I can press there twice to make sure it stays in the same direction as the original object was. Cool. Let's select that, select our object, and then Alt X and bring that over to the other side. Now, this opens up some opportunities. I'm not sure if I want all of this being open. We could actually just come to this, which is our cutter, and maybe do away with some of that. Let's have a look at how it looks and we'll make some decisions. So let's come into side view. Let's make sure we've got everything selected. Go into isolation mode so it's easier to deal with. Alt and W, we've got our box cutter and box. And then let's cut this. So let's go somewhere like there. That could be fun. Now, don't worry, we're going to mirror this over that side anyway. In fact, actually, if I G and X that to maybe there, Shift and D and X and put that there, we could have two. And then if we cut that out the center there, we've got those bits coming out the side. Yeah, I think let's go with that. And then what we need to do is actually get this fixed. So let's Alt X and mirror that and then that'll look right. Let's hide that. So there we go. We've got this sorted. It's nice and detailed. We could do anything we wanted to with this panel. I mean, do we want to have an extra bit of detail here? We could always go into face mode, select that I to bring it in, and then maybe E to extrude that out a little bit. That looks quite nice. Let's stick with that for now. And then for our next part, we are actually going to need to apply this. So let's select everything. Q, Smart Apply. And then we've got all that there. Now, this is why earlier on we made the decision that we were going to cut all of these out. But before we did that, we made them separate objects. If I scroll down here to my cutters, I can find those. So one, two, three original cubes, and they're still there. So what I'm going to do is use machine tools and the relative align feature to select that. So we've selected the cube that we want to use as the reference point last. And we're going to go to Machine Tools and Relative Align. Again, there is a video about this in the top right-hand corner. But what it's going to allow me to do is select there and select there and then press Space. And it is just put everything in the correct place. Except, and normally Relative Align would deal with this, because this was made with a radial array, these don't have rotation information. If I come over here and Item, it doesn't have any rotation, so it hasn't rotated these properly which is a bit of annoyance, but it's very easily solved because it's still centered on the origins that are the same. So if I make sure that this object is selected last, make sure that my selection or my transform pivot point is set to active element and do R, Z, and then type in 90 minus, everything's there really quick. And then this one, we're gonna do the same thing. So there, 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 R, X, 180 and we've got everything perfectly in place without having to spend loads of time faffing around. And then we can just hide those cubes again. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how efficient we can get when using add-ons. Now obviously I've edited this for the video, but when recording this, even with the explanation, I think this took me a total of about 25 minutes to get this done. And without add-ons, this would have taken way, way longer. I mean, just doing the panel lining could have taken forever. There are links to all of the add-ons that I've used in the description of the video. If you're interested in any of them, some of them are affiliate links, but some of them aren't. Machine Tools is free, for example. And hopefully you found this all interesting and you've got an idea of using this in projects for yourself. If you do, please say so in the comments section. I'd really love to hear what people are doing. And if you aren't subscribed, please do subscribe to the channel. Have a great day, guys.